So today I'm going to be going over a fragrance that got a good amount of hype when it first came out and then the stuff completely disappeared. Couldn't find it anywhere and it was a big bummer. I never even had the chance to talk about it, but now I'm able to and you can pick it up. So that's pretty cool. It's great news. Issey Miyake, Low Dissy, or Ensans. Now, this stuff here is fantastic. This is going to be for the guy or girl who wants something different, you know. You're kind of tired of the typical route that uh, you're kind of tired of the typical direction most designer fragrances are going these days. And you want something that's a nice wearable, uh, resinous, sweet, smoky scent. This is going to be for you. Now, Issey Miyake has a few fragrances in their line that go in the more resinous and sweet and balsamic direction like this one and this happens to be a great one as well so we're going to dive into it tell you how it smells how it performs when you can wear it and if i do think it is worth picking up so we'll start off with how this one smells immediately when you first spray it on you get this really nice mix of a smoky and mature incense note uh, a little bit of rose in here and then a nice creamy sandalwood combo there's also labdanum as well so it kind of has a little bit of a kind of a silky smooth creaminess off the top also when you first spray it. What I love though is that it has true depth, like it has layers. When I just sprayed that and smelled it, you can decipher each note, you know. The thing is a lot of times, especially with things that are on the cheaper side, um, and not always cheap fragrances by the way, it could be more expensive stuff, but it is more common with cheaper fragrances. A lot of times they're two dimensional, they're flat, just kind of like you're smelling a wall that has scent on it, right? Yeah, you could smell it, it smells great, but everything's kind of muddled together and you can't necessarily pick up on individual notes in the same way you can with a fragrance like this where everything is kind of spaced out. You get this one up into the air and you smell it or you get it on your skin and you smell it and you get those different layers. You get that kind of fresh, somewhat slightly sweet rose, but then you also get another layer of a smoky, spicy, dry incense and then a labdanum and then a sandalwood, some pink pepper, right? You get all these notes and it's not just flat. This has true dimension to it. And that may not be that important for some of you, but you'll find that after you've smelled a few fragrances like this that have this true uh, amount of layers to it, you start to get hooked on that. And every time you come across another fragrance that is in the same way where you can just smell everything individually like that, that's kind of what you start to prefer, you know? And every time I smell something that really is like that, it gets me excited because you don't get that every day. So we'll take a look at the full note breakdown here. They do give us a pretty good one. We have rose and labdanum up top, incense, pink pepper, and cumin in the mid, and leather, amberwood, sandalwood, cedarwood, and vetiver in the base. Very woods heavy down below, uh, a little bit fresh rose up top. Mid, you're getting spicy pink pepper and incense, and then cumin, which also is very spicy. Although I don't really get a ton of the cumin, so that one, you know, if it kind of makes you nervous because you don't like the smell or you don't like anything that is too spicy. For me, I don't pick up on a lot of it. I do get spiciness, but it's more so in the form of a pink pepper and then again, kind of the incense itself, which is a little bit dry. And also the cedar wood variety in here. They didn't list what type it is, they just said cedar, but it's of the drier and almost kind of earthier variety for me. So I actually really like that about it. And I also get oud to a slight extent. They don't list any oud here, but I do get some. So I don't know if that's just me, maybe some of you guys smell that as well, maybe you don't, but that's kind of what I pick up on. And leather, I do get a little bit of leather. It's slightly animalic to a small extent, not quite to the level of uh, Tuscan leather, but also not as fresh and laid back as ombre leather. Just using those two as an example, because most people know those. It's kind of right in the middle. It has a bit of a texture to it, and a slight bit of an earthiness, but it also isn't really the star of the show either. It's really all about that rose, incense, sandalwood, kind of labdanum sweet combo here. But again, it's primarily woods heavy, especially as you get further into the dry down, which I do really like how it goes in that direction. Uh, the vetiver here is also kind of earthy. It's not a clean vetiver like, you know, Tom Ford Gray vetiver or Roja Parfums vetiver, right? It's gonna be uh, something with a little bit more bite to it. You know, this is one of those situations where I don't really have anything else that smells similar to it. You know, I have a lot of fragrances. I've smelled a lot of fragrances and 
I don't really have anything else that smells like this one. You know, maybe it can fit into a similar ballpark to certain things out there. Like I saw one of the things on here was Gucci Intense Oud that it smells familiar with. Uh, and I don't really think so. But again, that kind of, you know, says that, hey, maybe some other people get Oud in this as well. Um, you know, that being said, the sweetness that it does have, maybe it could lean it in slightly in like a Mansara Instant Crush direction with how the Oud-ish comes across in here. But still, I think it's primarily independent. I think this is definitely a, uh, you know, a unique kind of one-of-a-kind creation here. I don't think they were trying to clone anything or get super close to anything. It's just my opinion, though. Performance is fantastic on this one. It's an eau de parfum. But to me, with how it smells, it almost leans further in the extrait direction. And so I bet this is a very highly concentrated EDP, like on the upper end, close to a parfum, if I had to guess, just because of how it smells and the impact and the the amount of depth that this one has and just kind of how it wears it kind of reminds me more so of a parfum but nonetheless it is a great great performer you know you would look at a note breakdown like like this and expect that but you just never know and uh you know note breakdown could be something like this and have terrible performance but in this instance here it's an eight nine plus hour scent on my skin consistently even as i've been wearing it here we had a couple cooler days more like actual fall here wore it on some of those days and it did great Great. pushes through the air colder windier days kind of rainy you know gloomy fall days which are super nice it's still pushed through this is a performance powerhouse here the projection is great the scent trail it leaves is great if you spray this up in the air or you're wearing it and you walk into a room that scent is going to be suspended for a good amount of time Super unique. Again, for what it is, this is a great, great pickup. And again, it's a collector's piece. You know, it's really going to be a piece of history. It's discontinued. You know, there is a chance now where you can get it at the link down below for a great price, considering on eBay, you're going to be looking at much more for this one. And there's a lot of uh, fragrances from the brand that are discontinued that kind of have popped up recently. And um, they just have a lot of good stuff that gets discontinued, basically. Uh, Noir Ombre discontinued, but has recently resurfaced here. And so you can still pick that one up as well. I'll link it down below. That stuff is also amazing. It really is something to see how these fantastic fragrances get discontinued. I mean, it totally makes sense. We're talking to designer brand here, but something like this and Noir Ombre truly to me are fragrances that could be released by a niche brand. And in my opinion, would do very well. I'm not saying that they should price them at a, uh, you know, Zerzhov price at retail or something, but I think if they were priced at Mansara retail prices or maybe a little bit less or something, I think they could actually do very well and pass as niche, like seriously. The, the creativity and everything behind these is awesome. This is great stuff. So that's gonna do it for me. Low Dissi Porome or Insans. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, but I you know tried to look up how to say it and I just didn't find anything concrete. So I'm just rolling with it. Link down below, scoop one up while you can. It's gonna become a piece of history one of these days and you're gonna wish you had it. I wish I had my box here with me because it's very nice presentation. It slides out. Uh, you can kind of see it, the pictures online, uh, but I don't have my box anywhere. Great presentation, box-wise, the bottle's nice, typical, standard. Scent is what it's all about, though. And if you can get this one like you can right now, I highly recommend it. Worst case, you buy it, you don't like it, you can resell it on eBay for a profit, okay? That's just really nice to know, so it makes it a bit easier to blind buy, but I do encourage you to check it out. That's gonna do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.